No, it's um, it's an honor to be with you guys again. Um, I can tell you, uh, I just, I, I literally travel now all over the world, and I uh, last year, I think there were eight or nine babies born. This year, now there's, I'm going to add this one, there's about six already this uh, born this year, or conceived. So I have nothing to do with the conception, it's just the Holy Spirit, right? Well, it's an honor to be with you guys. I just got back from Asia. I was in Asia for nine weeks, a Asia and Australia. So um, I spent nine weeks there, went to five nations. Uh, I had 12 churches, over 100 meetings. Um, yeah, 18 flights. It was crazy. God was, God was good. And uh, do I look tired? It's just because I drove here this morning. But uh, it's an honor to be with you guys. I hope tonight that we have a great time and uh, I look forward to do, maybe doing a little bit more prophetic ministry tonight and just blessing people. Um, it's just a, it's awesome to be here and see what God's doing in your midst. Amen. Uh, listen, I want to just share one scripture with you this morning. If you have your Bibles or your phones, uh, turn to the book of Ezekiel. It'll probably be on the overhead. Ezekiel chapter one. It's in the Old Testament. And uh, Ezekiel said this. Now it came to pass in the 30th year. Say 30th year. 30th year. In the fourth month. Would you say fourth month? Fourth. On the fifth day. Say fifth day. As I was among the captives by the river Trabar, the heavens were open. Would you say the heavens were opened? You know, it's always been in the heart of God to bring heaven to earth. Amen, Gary. Good point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It's always been God's intention to bring heaven to earth. It's his intention to um, touch the nations of the earth. I did this study this yesterday morning just on the goodness of God. And I just found this scripture. Where it says, the goodness of God will cover all the earth. Come on. You know, the, and, and so like we know that the goodness and the glory of God are linked. So um, how many know God wants to pour his goodness on the earth? He wants to open heaven over our lives, and he wants to do something uh, spectacular. Amen? Listen to what Paul said. Paul said this in Romans 15, 20. He said, It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. I want you to see this, that Paul always had this uh, sense of wanting to do something more with his life. Come on, is there anybody here that wants to do something more with your life? That God wants us to go in to the earth and do something uh, significant. He wants us to minister to people in such a way that their lives would be changed. Paul said, I'm an apostle. Now, th that word apostle is a very interesting word. It actually means sent one. That's what it means, sent one. But to put it in the right context, you have to look at how, who, who actually defined that word, and it was the Romans. And when the Romans uh, went in and they conquered a nation, Let's say they conquered a city. So they came into Trenton, okay? The Romans, the Italians, right? Any Italians here? No Italians here? You guys don't have Italians in Trenton? Wow, you have Italian food in Trenton? Okay, good. All right, awesome. In, in my city, in Hamilton, we have this little town, uh, th this little section of the city. It's called Racamuto, and it's, it's part of Racamuto, Italy. And we actually have more Rakamuto, Rakamutans, whatever they call themselves, in Hamilton than they actually have in the, in the city of Rakamuto in Italy. Um, so we got some great Italian food. But anyways, listen, the Romans, when the Romans went into a, a city and they conquered the city, what they would do, once they conquered that city, they would send what was called an apostolic team. And that apostolic team would go into that city and they would begin to change everything within that city. They would change the culture, they would change the values, they change the principles, they change the behaviors, and they change the atmosphere of that city to represent Rome. So that if you were a Roman and you wanted to go to that city, you'd walk into that city and it'd feel like home. It'd feel like Rome. You could, go to the, you could go to the theaters and you'd have Roman theater. You could go to the stores and have Roman food. You could go to the arts and do, see Roman culture at its best. Now, I want you to understand that. That that's the intent of being apostolic. 
that God actually wants every one of us to have a sense of apostolic call in our life that we would change the atmosphere, the culture, the values, the principles of our city. That every church should have an apostolic center in their heart where they'd say, we want to change the atmosphere of Trenton. We want to make it like the kingdom of God. God wants to come in and invade our city. Come on, can I hear an amen? And so that was the intent when Paul said, I'm an apostle. He was saying, I want to take the kingdom of God, its values, its principles, its culture, everything that the kingdom of God, I want to take it from heaven and I want to bring it into earth. Amen, Amen, Gary. Good point. Hallelujah. And that's our intent. It's not just that we would be like everybody else. Like we might dress like everybody else, but we have a different spirit than everybody else. Come on. We're living in a different way. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And so, listen, wherever I travel, I see the church. Listen, this is the greatest day that I've ever lived in church as a Christian. I've been a Christian now for a lot of years. I won't tell you how old. I mean, I got saved when I was seven. I backslid for a few years, but ever since I've been saved. So, you know, I've been in ministry for 34 years. And I'm telling you, this is the greatest day to be living in the church. I'm telling you, people are getting saved all over the world. The church is is alive. Come on, the church is alive in Trenton. Can I hear an amen? And so God wants to do something. His heart is to establish heaven on earth. And so in our passage, Ezekiel says this. He says, there was a specific, listen, there was a specific year, the 30th year. There was a specific month, the fourth month. There was a specific day. There was a specific situation. He was with the captives. He had a situation. Anybody got a situation in your life? Right? Like, I got some situations. Anybody else over there? Over in this section. You got any situations? Right? We all have situations. And then he says, I I was by the river Trebar. In other words, there's specific places. There's a specific year. There's a specific day. There's a specific month. There's a specific situation. And there's a specific place where God wants to open heaven over our lives. Listen, it is... May 6, 2018. Why couldn't today be the day where heaven opens up over your life? Why not? Like, it's not just a one-time thing. There's multiple times. Let me give you some dates. I, I, I just want to give you some, some perspective. Uh, May 10th, 1940. What's May 10th, 1940? May, May 10th, 1940 was the day that Winston Churchill became the prime minister of, of uh, Britain. And on the day that he became prime minister at three o'clock in the morning, he said, a deep calm has come over my soul. It was as if I was walking with destiny. Everything that I had done up to this moment had been a preparation for now. And I knew I was the man to win the war. How many know heaven opened up and actually created a leader, gave the opportunity for a leader to come and actually save earth as we know it, the world as we know it. Like, like that was a specific day. It was a specific situation. Listen to this one. Um, February 11th, 1948. I'm not going to go through like 40 years or 90, 90 years of history, but listen. May, February 11th, 1948, a young woman in Battleford, Saskatchewan, she prophesied about an open door which God had set before the students and was asking them to pass through. And that actually became known as the Latter Day Rain Mo- or Latter Day Rain Latter Rain Movement in 1948. And it's actually what you and I are experiencing today, the worship, the open worship, the fivefold ministry, the prophetic gifts. That all actually got stirred up in 1948 in Battleford, Saskatchewan. But it was a specific day. It was a specific situation. These young people were crying out to God. Let me get you, let me get a little personal. January 5th, 1981. Jen, now, i just gotten saved. October 20th, 1980, I was smoking pot. I was stoned out of my mind. I was sitting in my car with a bunch of friends listening to ACDC. October 20th, 1980. I was like 17 years old. And these three guys got in our car, and they, uh, you know, they wanted some drugs. We'd smoked them all. We didn't actually have any. And um, all of a sudden, I find myself out the car, and this guy runs at me, does this, like, you know, Jackie Chan move, and puts both his feet right into my chest. And so I'm on the ground. I'm thinking, 
okay, God, get me out of this one. And so I get back in my car. The guy looks at me and says, uh, roll down your window. So me, stupid, I roll down my window. And he looks at me and he goes, I don't like you. Whack, and smacks me right in the face. And then he goes to his glove compartment and pulls out a gun and points it at me and says, next time I come around, I'm going to blow your brains out. I was like, Jesus, get me out of this right now. But listen, that was... Uh, October 20th, 1980, at 8.45 in the evening, I remember because I watched my watch, at 8.45 in that evening, my mom was at a prayer meeting, praying, saying, God, whatever it takes, bring my boys home. The next day, I gave my heart to Christ, and I've never turned. The specific moment when God opened heaven over my life. January 5th, 1981. I'm not going to tell you my whole life. But listen, January 5th, 1981. I was in my bedroom. I was trying to figure out my life. I'd, I was flunking out of high school. In fact, I didn't, didn't pass high school. Didn't even graduate from high school. I was messed up. I was just kind of, you know, getting out of a fog of drugs and alcohol. And I'm, I'm on my knees and I'm saying like, hey, are you there? I didn't even know how to pray. I just said, God, are you real? Like, what do you want to do with my life? That was my prayer. And in a moment, I, I heard something. I just heard, go into the ministry. So I ran upstairs and told my mom I was going to work for the government. <laughs> God's truth. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, I heard I'm supposed to work for the ministry. Go to the ministry. She goes, you're supposed to go to Bible college. I was like, you're out of your mind. I don't want to go to Bible college. I can't even get out of high school. And then I applied to Bible college and they rejected me. But I had a pastor who believed in me, and he called the register, and he said, if this boy isn't in your school in September, I'm pulling all my money and all my students. A week later, I got a letter, congratulations. <laughs> Haven't opened up over my life. Let me give you two more. March 10th, 1985. I just uh, moved to Toronto. Uh, I, I come into this new church, you know, it's kind of, you know, the same idea, worship, and it was an MFI church, and, and I come in first time, like I'm just this little Pentecostal kid, I don't know anything, and then my pastor says to me, he says, hey, we're going to prophesy over today, I, go, I said, you're going to what? He goes, we're going to prophesy over you. I said, well, hang on a minute. I haven't prayed, I haven't fasted, is this guy going to tell me about my sins? And he goes, Gary, chill, just relax. And so I'm sitting on the, on the stage, and I'm in this chair, this guy from Ireland named Barry White, not the singer. And uh, he starts prophesying over me. He told my past, my present, and my future. And at the end of it, he said this. He said, you're going to travel the world. You're going to preach in conferences. You're going to minister with other brethren. You're going to prophesy with an abandonment. You're going to ride on the high places of the earth. I mean, I just rode, you know, a plane 30,000 feet in the air, right? I consider that the high places of the earth. And so I was, tw I was 22. I was like, let's make it happen. <laughs> and then I say, for the next 28 years, the only traveling I was doing was to the grocery store for my wife. Because <laughs> sometimes, listen, here's what I found. And this, I, this is for somebody here today. You know, sometimes we, uh, God gives us a promise, but the promise is bigger than we are. And he actually has to get us to the place where we can handle the promise that he's given us. The challenges in the years or the months or the, you know, the multiple years that God is forming and fashioning you, you've got to stay faithful and not get disappointed amen. and not live in the, the discouragement. Come on, can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Now listen, August 10th, 2014. Now that's my anniversary. I remember it very well. I was preaching at a friend's church. And this random lady, I don't know who, I don't even, I know her name, Carol, that's it. She came up and handed me a note. People hand me all st stuff all the time. If it's money, I remember it. But she put it, I put my note, this note in my pocket, I forgot about it. The next time I was wearing the jeans, I realized, oh, this is a note. I opened the note, and it's a prophecy. And in the prophecy, there was a number of things, but in the prophecy, she said, Travel, 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 dust off your suitcase. You're about to travel. Dignitaries are waiting for you. Now, I wasn't traveling. The next week, so I didn't even have a suitcase. I went out and bought a suitcase, a travel suitcase, just as an act of faith. The next week, I got a phone call from a businessman saying, hey, we need you to go to Trinidad and Tobago. There's a church there. My wife, my, we're going to send you. We're going to take you to Tobago for a few days vacation, you and your wife. But we want you to go to this church, and we want you to bless it. And we're going to give you an honorary, and we're going to pay for everything. I was like, hallelujah. At that moment, that moment, I started traveling the world. Last year, I went to 17 countries, 66 churches. 
This year, I'm, I'm literally, I have no weekends available. I have one weekend that I know of available. The rest, I'm, full, I'm booked, and I'm booking into 2019 almost to August. Listen, when God wants to open heaven over your life, He opens heaven over your life. Now listen, Ezekiel said three things. Let's put it up on the screen for a second. He said, when heaven opens... He said three things happened. Number one, he said, I saw visions of God. Yeah. Now listen, God wants to show himself to you. God wants to reveal himself. When heaven opens up over your life, he wants to reveal a different aspect of who he is. Every time God has opened heaven over my life, I have seen him differently. I have seen him uniquely. He is a multi uh, natured God. In, in other words, he has a multifaceted aspect to his nature. In other words, sometimes you need him as your healer. You need heaven to open up. Sometimes you need him as your provider. Come on, can I hear an amen? Sometimes you need him as a comforter. God wants to open heaven. I don't know your situation right now. You might be like him in the river Chabar by the captives. <laughs> you, you might be feeling captive, but there's a moment when God wants to say, hey, this moment, Today, I want to open heaven over your life. And I want to give you a vision of who I am. I want to give you a vision of who I am. I remember um, my last semester of Bible college. Um, I was in Hamilton, actually, where I live. I was at People's Church in Hamilton, and I was praying about three things. Um, I had an opportunity to take a job in a place called Tilsonburg, which I'd never heard. My back still hurts when I hear that word. You know, that's the, the song. And uh, then I was dating a girl. I was actually engaged to a girl that I knew I could not marry her, but I didn't know how to break up with her. And the third was I didn't have any money. I, had, I needed $1,850 to go back to school and finish off my last semester. And so I was praying that night, and I, the presence of God was so real. I was weeping at the altar, and I heard the Lord say three things. He said, take the job, dump the girl, and go back to school. I'll provide for you. So that's exactly what I did. I took the job. I went to Tilsonburg. I dumped the girl. When I went to Tilsonburg, I met this girl named Sheila, and I've been married to her for almost 33 years. But I dumped that girl, and then I, 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 went, I went, uh, went home. And so I, a week after that encounter on a Sunday night, the following Sunday night, I was at home in my living room with my parents. My, my mom was like, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to go up to school. I'm going to open my mailbox. I'm going to believe there's money going to be in my mailbox because God said he was going to provide. And, and I said, That's, I'm just going to believe that. And if, if there's no money there, what I'll do is I'll come home. I'll pack my stuff up and I'll come home. I didn't hear from God. My mom walked out of the room, came back into the room with an envelope with $1,850 cash. She said, Gary, on Monday morning, now this is Sunday night. On Monday morning, people called, started calling me and saying, the Lord spoke to me this morning that I need to give Gary some money. And by the end of the week, I had $1,850. Now see, listen, in that moment, heaven opened up over my life. Now listen, let's get a little closer. This last trip, I, had, I bought $10,000 in tickets. I had 18 flights. My wife had four. So we had 22 flights that I had to pay for. $10,000. I put them on my visa. Hallelujah for visa. Right? My wife said, what are you going to do? I said, hey, God's going to provide. I don't worry about that stuff. I said, listen, even before I start any ministry, God will provide for all this. She goes, okay, I don't know, you know. Because we live by faith, right? And so two days later, after I bought all these tickets, two days later, a businessman called me and said, Hey, Gary, I need to meet with you. Uh, the Lord spoke to me this morning that I'm supposed to give you $500 a month for your ministry. I was like, Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, he said, Let's get together for lunch. So I got together for lunch, handed me a check for the whole year, $6,000. So I said, I went home. I said, Look at this. My wife's like, Whew. I said, I only need $4,000 more. Now, when my visa came in, I have two weeks to pay my visa, I was looking at my visa and my wife's visa because I had to buy a flight on my wife's visa because the company, you have to present the card to show that you're the ticket holder. What I noticed was the same ticket was on my visa. So they actually double booked our tickets. So I called them and they said, sir, we're sorry, we'll credit the money to your visa. That was $2,000. So now I only needed $2,000. 
right? So two days, literally, before I'm about to get on the flight, one of the churches that I was going to, which is a large church, 20,000 people, they called me and said, hey, we got a problem. We didn't get enough sufficient paperwork, and we're not sure that you're going to do any ministry at our church for two weeks. I can schedule for two weeks at this church. I said, hey, dude, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay me. I'm going to come and bless your church anyways. God will provide. So he says, well, let me think about this. So um, he calls me back or texts me back, and he says, hey, listen, I got it all figured out. By the way, we're going to cover your flight. That was the extra $2,000. Now listen, what do you need to see God today? How do you need to see him? Do you need healing this morning? Do you need God to touch you? Do you need God to be your provision? Ezekiel said, when heaven opens, I saw visions of God. See, I've never questioned that God's a God of provision. Because he already settled that in my heart. Come on, can I hear an amen? amen. Like I don't set, I, I've settled the fact that God's a God of promise because he's so open heaven over my life that he is revealing his promises. What do you need to see God as today? Then the third, second thing he said, I saw visions of God and then he said, the word of the Lord came expressly to me. In other words, listen, that word expressly has this idea. It means to point, to challenge, to charge, or to come with purpose. In other words, folks, listen, when God opens heaven over your life, he wants to put a word into your spirit that brings purpose with it, that brings a challenge or a charge. You see, when I was 17, I was, I was still 17 because my, my birthday was later in the month, January 28th. Just write that down if you're thinking about that. But, you know, um, on January 5th, 1981, when God said to me, go into the ministry, that word had such purpose in my spirit that it has carried me for 34 years. You see, every week we come to church, we have a word of purpose that's preached to us. Now, it's either going to come expressly into your spirit, or it's just going to be another word. It's actually going to bring purpose into your spirit. Come on, can I hear an amen? Amen. God wants to breathe over. You might have had a prophetic word. Somebody's maybe, I know, I know most of you guys have had probably prophetic words. Who's had a prophetic word over your life? Yeah, look at all the hands going up. Listen, God has put something in your spirit. And it's a word, it's a challenge, it's a charge. And so my encouragement to you is, heaven opened, let the word come into your heart, let it get a hold of you, let it do something with you. Yes. Amen, Gary, good point, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You see, listen, God is always speaking. Some of the best times that God has spoken over my life. She wants a drink of water. All right. Listen, some of the best times that God has spoken over my life have not through, come through prophecy. They've come when I'm on my knees before the Lord. The things that have challenged me and, and stirred me and, and moved me, they've been in places like in the house of God. Just standing in the house of God at the altar, just waiting on God, and God's speaking and downloading something in me, and it transforms me and changes me. Come on, do we believe the house of God is a place where God speaks? Listen, when God speaks, He wants to put a creative word into your spirit. The, the fact of the matter is, the seed has the potential to create. The seed has the potential to grow. The seed has the potential and the power to bring something to life we got to believe that God wants to speak into our spirit. And then he says the third thing. He says, I saw visions of God and the word of the Lord came expressly. And then he said, the hand of the Lord came upon me. Seven times in the book of Ezekiel, he uses this phrase. Now listen, God's a spirit. He doesn't have a hand. Right? But, but there is enough in scripture to realize that he wants us to understand that he's got a hand and he wants to come on us. In other words, he wants to touch us. He wants to impact our heart, impact our life. Last year, I was in Cambodia. I don't know. I, I haven't been back since that. So I was in Cambodia. And um, I, I, was, uh, I go to Cambodia at least once or twice a year. It's a missions thing for me. I pay my own way. I buy, get, you know, get my hotel, and I go in, and I just sew. They give me an interpreter, and I literally... I walk with that interpreter and just go through the congregation prophesying over people. They have a conference of about three or 4,000 people. So I'm in this conference, and there's about 1,100 pastors, and I'm just picking out pastors, prophesying over them. They're all crying. And during worship, just as worship is going on, people are manifesting. Demons are coming out. I mean, it's just a 
crazy, crazy environment. They're actually under open heavens right now. And so I'm, I'm sitting in the front row. Just where, what's your name? Just where Josh is right there. I'm sitting in the front row, and there's a guy up on the stage. He's one of the speakers, and his name is Mike. And he is literally a potter. Now, I'm not into pottery. I don't like getting my hands dirty. I mean, I'm just, I love when my hands are clean, okay? I'm not a clean freak, but I'm just not going to, like, the other day, just before I left for Asia, my battery went on me. And so I was thinking, how am I going to change this battery without getting my hands dirty? And so I just happened to be having breakfast with a friend of mine. And I said, hey, do you know how to change a battery? He goes, absolutely, I know how to change a battery. I was like, well, could you do that for me? He goes, absolutely. And so within 15 minutes, he had changed my battery, went to the store, got another battery, put the battery in, got the store, and I had not gotten my hands dirty at all. I count that, I count that a blessing. I mean, I consider that a, a, a wonderful goal, right? So Mike's a potter. Now, I'm sitting in the front row, and Mike, he's got this beautiful wheel, and then he takes this 50-pound piece of clay, and he puts it on the wheel. Now, I, like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but in that moment, it was like all the thousands of people that were behind me were, like, out of zone. I couldn't hear them. It was just me, this piece of clay, and God. And so Mike, as Mike is talking, it's kind of like every time he would say something, the Holy Spirit would kind of talk to me, okay? So this is what happened. So he puts this thing on the wheel and he goes, now, that piece of clay can never move off that wheel until I move it off that wheel. And immediately, like the Holy Spirit's like, did, uh, <clears throat> did you get that? <laughs> I was like, uh, what? He said, you're on my wheel. You're not getting off until I tell you you're getting off. Oh, boy. I was like, this is not going to be a good session. So then Mike looks at, you know, he's, he's, this wheel's going around. This clay's going around. And he goes, now, I can't do anything with this until I put water on it. And you need the water of God's word. And you need the water of God's spirit. And he brings these jugs out and starts pouring water on it. And again, the Holy Spirit's saying, hey, did you get that? Like, you need my word and you need my spirit in your life. Or you're not, I can't do anything with you. I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit. Like, and like, nobody is in the room. It's just me and Mike watching this guy, right? And so then he starts putting his hands on this piece of clay. And, he, and he's, he's, the wheel's going around, and he's pouring water. He's got a wet sponge, and he's kind of sponging this thing. He goes, now this thing is fighting me the whole time. And Mike's got bigger muscles than I, and he's got no, you know, sleeves on. And he's just literally working this piece of clay. I mean, every muscle, every grimace in his face is trying to work this piece of clay as he's pouring water on it. And the Holy Spirit says, did you understand that? Like, you always fight me. I'm like, uh, Really? I don't do that much. And, and, and like the Holy Spirit saying, well, like, look at the clay. It's just, and literally, he is fighting this piece of clay. And slowly the clay is going from here, and it starts to get about that part. And then he goes, and, and like in his voice, you can hear, you know, this is working it. And for about 20 minutes, he's working this piece of clay. And then he goes, okay, I can do anything with this piece of clay now. It's almost done. I, I could touch it, and it, nothing. I could do anything I want. And he just kind of does this. Boom, with his finger, and the clay just starts wobbling. I'm like, okay. And then, I don't know when he did it, but at some point, he had created a hole right at the top of this piece of clay. And then from the inside out, he began to build this unbelievable vase about this high from the table to about there, this beautiful vase. I mean, it was a stunning vase. I mean, I was like, sign me up. I want to be a potter. <laughs> like, I, I, and, and like, I was willing to get my hands dirty. But as he's working this vase, okay, as he's working it, I, I see him. Literally, the clay is touching his face. I mean, he's covered in it. And he's got the vase and clay right beside him as he's molding and shaping this vase from the inside out. And then at one point, I see him talking to the clay. 
And so I'm like the next morning I ha I'm having breakfast with Mike and I'm overwhelmed. Like, like literally I left the session, went home to my hotel, sat up for two hours and just took every note, everything I could remember. I went through every scripture in the Bible that talks about clay and pottery. I was so moved by it. I mean, I, I've got three messages on just clay. So I said to him, I said, Mike, were you touching the clay? Like, what, what's the whole deal with the clay on your face? And I said, were you speaking to the clay? He says, yeah, Gary. He said, um, he said, I found that when I get close to the clay and I begin to speak into it, I, I want the clay to know what I'm trying to create. And again, the Holy Spirit saying like, See, I'm, I want to get that close to you, Gary. I want to get face to face with you. I want you to hear what I'm speaking over you. I'm trying to create something in you. Come on. God wants to create something in us. So Mike, like he finishes this vase. He's put all these decorations on the vase. He pours red ink or dye on it. And it's a beautiful red vase. And I'm like, yes! I'm like freaking out. I'm like, I'm the vase! You are beautiful. <laughs> like, I am just mesmerized. He goes, you think I'm done, right? I'm like, yes, get me off the wheel. <laughs> and then he sticks his hand, and he goes right into the clay pot. And he pulls out a chunk of clay, and he goes, well, hang on a minute. There's, there's disappointment. Pulls another piece out. There's pride. There's offense. There's fear. I'm like, stop already. I thought I was done. And then out of nowhere, Mike takes his hand and completely destroys what he had just built. Now, again, I'm invested. I'm sitting in the front row. The moment he did that, I literally dropped to my knees. I was like, no! Like, everybody in the whole crowd was freaking out. I don't care what anybody's thinking. He just beat the tar out of me. And then he looked at every one of us and he said, See, you thought all along that I was building a vase. But my intent all along was to build a bowl. And then he starts building this amazing bowl. I mean, the bowl was better than the vase. And he said, See, the bowl was to display fruit. The bowl was to put water in to feed the thirsty or food to feed the hungry. I sat there and thought, oh my gosh, God. Like you can stop now. I got the lesson. <laughs> you know, 2015, I found myself in Mexico. And I go again, a missions trip to Mexico and I'm doing some presbytery meetings, and this young kid comes up. His name is Juanito. And Juanito's like 18 years old, maybe. And um, so I lay my hands on him and start prophesying, and I feel like the Spirit of the Lord say, break poverty off his life. And so say to the pastor, we're going to break poverty. The two other prophets, we just start breaking poverty. We go crazy on this kid, calling gifts out and breaking poverty. And I have some money in my pocket. I said, pastor, is it okay culturally? I feel like we need to give this kid some money. Do you mind if I do it? And he goes, no, let's do it. And I said, what about if we ask the church to kind of give to him? And he goes, well, we've never done that before, but I think it's a God thing. So I said, church, would you be willing to give? And so I put some money down and the church, as the church always does. I mean, the church is an awesome place. You guys are awesome people. They start running to the altar and they start dropping pesos. I mean, hundreds and thousands of pesos at this kid's feet. And, and everybody's crying. I'm crying. The kid's crying. And, and we didn't know this, right? But he was the first of seven children. After the seventh child, the father left the family and the mother is a maid. She makes like $50 a month. They're living in abject poverty. The only clothes he has on his back are the ones he's wearing. So it's this God moment. Heaven opened up over this kid's life. And, and all of a sudden, you know, all this money. I mean, they literally had two bags that they had to put all the money. We had to assign somebody to him so that he wouldn't just give it all to his mother. 
We said, look, look, we need to save some of this. We need to buy him some clothes. So we literally had to help someone work that out with him. So that's like 2015. I leave. I, I'm a sun, Sunday night. I'm on a red eye back home. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even thinking about it. You know, I just say, hey, we prophesy the word of the Lord over And the word of the Lord came expressly to him. And so the next year, 2000, and uh, I, maybe I'm 2014, 2015, I go back. What year is it today? No, 2016. Pardon me. I go back and I'm doing the same thing. And I, I'm, I'm just about to prophesy. And who should be on the piano during worship but this kid, Juanito? And he's like. So I look at the pastor. I said, is that the kid we prophesied over last year? He goes, Gary, craziest thing. He said, the day you left on Monday morning, he just started showing up to church. He started cleaning the church. He just started serving, and he said, we didn't realize this, but all the time he was here, he was learning how to play the piano by ear, and he's become one of our best sound technicians. I was like, this is unbelievable. I said, give him some more money, you know, like pray over him and give him some more money, and so that's 2016. Last year, I go back. I go back, I'm ready to prophesy again. I look at who should be playing the bass guitar? Juanito. So I said, like, Eric, is that Juanito? He goes, Gary, he said, I don't know what to say. He said, the day that you left uh, uh, on that first time, he came, he's played the guitar. This kid is so good. We have actually put him over all our youth worship. Second, he said, we're, we hired him last year part-time. Now we're hiring him full-time. We have six weekend services. He is over and managing all of the worship teams in each of the campuses. And it get, listen, it gets better. He, they said this year he saved money, raised money, to go on his first missions trip to Cuba. Immediately, I thought of this scripture. I don't exactly remember the date it was. It was in July. I know that. On July, let's say, 8th, 2015. Heaven opened up over Juanito's life. The word of the Lord came expressly to him. And he let God put his hand on his life. And they began to shape him and mold him. And, and this young kid is becoming a, a rock star for God. I mean, he is an amazing young man in two years. You know, I just, I, I, I just came to the realization, I have no excuse. I have no excuse to not let God use my life, put his hand on my life, to touch me and do whatever he needs to do. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Father, I just pray today as we close this part of the service, Lord, that on this day, Lord, you would open heaven over the lives of every person here. That you would speak into their heart a word that would point, challenge, charge, or come with purpose in their spirit. Lord, that your hand would come upon them like the clay. Lord, it's, it really isn't about us. It's about you working in our lives. It's about you declaring your intentions over our life and what you want to do, what you want to mold and shape into our heart. Lord, I pray for every person today, Lord, whatever their circumstance, whatever their situation, Lord, I'm asking you to open heaven over their lives. Open heaven over their lives. You might be here today, just every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to give anybody an opportunity. Maybe you're here and you've never invited Jesus into your heart or you've invited him or maybe you've kind of walked away from him and you want to give Jesus an opportunity to kind of speak over you and, and do something new and fresh with your life. If you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart or you've walked away and you need to come back to Jesus, just put up your hand right now. I want to pray with you. 
I want to invite Jesus into your heart this morning. Thank you. Anybody else? Don't be afraid. God wants to touch you. Thank you. God wants to speak over you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to form you like that piece of clay. Now, we do this every week. Everywhere I go, people get saved. Last night I was at church and a young man gave his heart to Christ. It's, it's what we do. It's, it's we give people an opportunity. Anybody else? Maybe you got invited today. Maybe you've been coming to church. Listen, you can come to church and not be saved. I just want to give you one more opportunity. Anybody else? A couple people this morning. Don't be concerned about who's around you. Maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now. This could be a moment of change, a moment of transformation in your heart. Just let him put his hand on you. Give you 15 more seconds. Okay, thank you. The three people that uh, lifted your hand, here's what I want to do. I want to just pray uh, a simple prayer. We're going to invite Jesus into our heart. We're going to ask him to come and begin to work and fashion us. In church, maybe everybody can pray this prayer. You can just invite Jesus. Everybody, the people who raise their hand, you invite Jesus. And then I'd like to pray with you maybe later after the service. Just come on up and I'll pray uh, over you and just ask the Lord to be with you. So let's pray. Everybody pray this. You who raised your hands, pray this. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you would come into my heart. I ask that you'd forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I'm not perfect, but you are. When you come into my life, you begin to work in me. So put your hand on me. Speak to me. Open heaven over my life. Lord, I want to change. I want to be renewed. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to pray for everybody here this morning. Um, I, I want to do more prophetic tonight, if we could. I just got a short word that I want to just share with you, and then we'll jump into the prophetic. But I, I feel like the word I gave you was prophetic. You know, I've been sharing this word wherever I go because I do believe that God wants to open heaven over everyone's life. And I, I think it's so crucial for uh, all of us to get a sense of hunger in our spirit to say, God, would you speak to me? You know, God can speak in many, many different ways. You know, I was just in a service last night and our pastor was preaching and, and um, he just had everybody close their eyes and he said, just now, just ask Jesus to speak to you. And in the midst of that, you know, I mean, he, he said, as soon as God speaks to you, put up your hand. And like literally all over the room, people were putting up their hand, boom, 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 just that quick because God wants to speak to us. Amen. But maybe you're here today and you said, look, I, I need heaven open up over my life. I need to see God in a new way. I, I need God to speak to me or I need to, I, I need to be a little bit more obedient, letting him kind of shape and mold me. If that's you, just stand to your feet right now. I want to pray for you and then we'll close the service and just believe God to touch you and strengthen you. Come on, just don't be afraid. Just everybody stand up who needs to stand up and we're going to pray. And I want you to just lift your hands to the Lord, if you would. And um, let's just ask the Lord right now to open heaven over our lives. Amen. So, Father, I pray for this church today at the crossroads. Lord, let, let that be literally a word in season that we're at the crossroads of our life. Lord, we're, we're saying, God, open heaven today over our hearts. Open it over our lives that we would hear your voice, that we would see you in a new way. Lord, as maybe our provider or the one who is the source of strength. Lord, the one who helps us through the difficulties. The one who is 
uh, El Shaddai, the, the Almighty God, the powerful God. Lord, you're our healer. You're our strength. Whatever we need you to be, Lord, you're the great I am. And so, God, would you reveal to every person this morning, Lord, even as they fellowship over dinner and lunch, and Lord, just thinking about what you would want to do, speak, Lord, we pray. Bring purpose into their heart. Thank you for this great church. I pray today that your spirit would speak to every person. Lord, today, May 6, 2018, let it be a moment where heaven would open up first over our lives and then over this city, Lord, over Trenton. Lord, that heaven would open. People would come to the realization. They would see you as, Lord, the great salvation. Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, we pray amen. 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 God bless you.